Yiddish, Yiddies, Yiddies or Edies, Yiddish, Idish, lit. Jewish. Pronounced J-R-D. In older sources Yiddies Tyats Yiddish Teich, lit. Judeo-German, is the historical language of the Ashkenazi Jews. It originated during the 9th century in Central Europe, providing the nascent Ashkenazi community with a high German-based vernacular fused with elements taken from Hebrew and Aramaic as well as from Slavic languages and traces of Romance languages. Yiddish is written with a fully vocalized version of the Hebrew alphabet. The earliest surviving references date from the 12th century and call the language Launaskans, Lashan Ashnaz, language of Ashkenaz, or Tayats Teich, a variant of Tiuch, the contemporary name for Middle High German. Colloquially, the language is sometimes called Mamlon, Mame Lashan, lit. Mother tongue, distinguishing it from Lounge, Lashan Koidash, holy tongue meaning Hebrew and Aramaic. The term Yiddish, short for Yiddish Teich, Jewish German, did not become the most frequently used designation in the literature until the 18th century. In the late 19th and into the 20th century the language was more commonly called Jewish, especially in non-Jewish contexts, but Yiddish is again the more common designation today. Modern Yiddish has two major forms. Eastern Yiddish is far more common today. It includes Southeastern, Ukrainian Romanian, Mideastern Polish Galician Eastern Hungarian, and Northeastern Lithuanian Belarusian dialects. Eastern Yiddish differs from Western both by its far greater size and by the extensive inclusion of words of Slavic origin. Western Yiddish is divided into Southwestern, Swiss Alsatian Southern German, Midwestern, Central German, and Northwestern, Netherlandic Northern German, dialects. Yiddish is used in a number of Haredi Jewish communities worldwide. It is the first language of the home, school, and in many social settings among many Haredi Jews, and is used in most Hasidic and many Lithuanian yeshivas. The term Yiddish is also used in the adjectival sense, synonymously with Jewish, to designate attributes of Yiddishkeit, Ashkenazi culture, for example, Yiddish cooking and Yiddish music. Klezmer, prior to the Holocaust, there were 11 to 13 million speakers of Yiddish among 17 million Jews worldwide. 85% of the approximately 6 million Jews who died in the Holocaust were Yiddish speakers, leading to a massive decline in the use of the language. Assimilation following World War II and Aliyah, immigration to Israel, further decreased the use of Yiddish both among survivors and among Yiddish speakers from other countries, such as in the Americas. However, the number of speakers is increasing in Hasidic communities. Origins the established view is that, as with other Jewish languages, Jews speaking distinct languages learned new co-territorial vernaculars, which they then Judaized. In the case of Yiddish, this scenario sees it as emerging when speakers of Zarphatic and other Judeo-Romance languages began to acquire varieties of Middle High German, and from these groups the Ashkenazi community took shape. Exactly what German base lies behind the earliest form of Yiddish is disputed. In Weinreich's model, Jewish speakers of Old French or Old Italian who were literate in either liturgical Hebrew or Aramaic, or both, migrated through southern Europe to settle in the Rhine Valley in an area known as Lotharingia, later known in Yiddish as Lothar, extending over parts of Germany and France. There, they encountered and were influenced by Jewish speakers of High German languages and several other German dialects. Both Weinreich and Solomon Birnbaum developed this model further in the mid-1950s. In Weinreich's view, this old Yiddish substrate later bifurcated into two distinct versions of the language, Western and Eastern Yiddish. They retained the Semitic vocabulary and constructions needed for religious purposes and created a Judeo-German form of speech, sometimes not accepted as a fully autonomous language. Later linguistic research has finessed the Weinreich model or provided alternative approaches to the language origins, with points of contention being the characterization of its Germanic base, the source of its Hebrew, Aramaic adstrata, and the means that and location where this fusion occurred. Some theorists argue that the fusion occurred with a Bavarian dialect base. The two main candidates for the germinal matrix of Yiddish, the Rhineland and Bavaria, are not necessarily incompatible. 
There may have been parallel developments in the two regions, seeding the western and eastern dialects of modern Yiddish. Dovid Katz proposes that Yiddish emerged from contact between speakers of High German and Aramaic-speaking Jews from the Middle East. The lines of development proposed by the different theories do not necessarily rule out the others, at least not entirely. An article in the foreword argues that, in the end, a new standard theory of Yiddish's origins will probably be based on the work of Weinreich and his challengers alike. Paul Wexler proposed a model in 1991 that took Yiddish, by which he means primarily Eastern Yiddish, not to be genetically grounded in a Germanic language at all, but rather as Judeo Sorbian, a proposed West Slavic language, that had been relaxified by High German. In more recent work, Wexler has argued that Eastern Yiddish is unrelated genetically to Western Yiddish. Wexler's model has met with little academic support, and strong critical challenges, especially among historical linguists. History By the 10th century, a distinctive Jewish culture had formed in Central Europe, which came to be called Askenazi Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jews, from Hebrew, Askens Ashkenaz, Genesis chapter 10 verse 3, the medieval Hebrew name for Northern Europe and Germany. Ashkenaz was centered on the Rhineland and the Palatinate, notably Worms and Speyer, in what is now the westernmost part of Germany. Its geographic extent did not coincide with the German principalities of the time, and it included Northern France. Ashkenaz bordered on the area inhabited by another distinctive Jewish cultural group, the Sephardi Jews, who ranged into southern France. Ashkenazi culture later spread into Eastern Europe with large-scale population migrations. Nothing is known with certainty about the vernacular of the earliest Jews in Germany, but several theories have been put forward. The first language of the Ashkenazi may, as noted above, have been the Aramaic language, the vernacular of the Jews in Roman era Judea and ancient and early medieval Mesopotamia. The widespread use of Aramaic among the large non-Jewish Syrian trading population of the Roman provinces, including those in Europe, would have reinforced the use of Aramaic among Jews engaged in trade. In Roman times, many of the Jews living in Rome and southern Italy appear to have been Greek speakers, and this is reflected in some Ashkenazi personal names, e.g., Kolonimos and Yiddish Todres. Hebrew, on the other hand, was regarded as a holy language reserved for ritual and spiritual purposes and not for common use. Much work needs to be done, though, to fully analyze the contributions of those languages to Yiddish, it is generally accepted that early Yiddish was likely to have contained elements from other languages of the Near East and Europe, absorbed through migrations. Since some settlers may have come via France and Italy, it is also likely that the Romance-based Jewish languages of those regions were represented. Traces remain in the contemporary Yiddish vocabulary, for example, Britias and Bentchen, to bless ultimately from the Latin benedicere, lion leonin, to read, from the old French lay, e, re, and the personal names bonum bonum, related to French bon nom, good name, and yentl, old French gentil, noble. Western Yiddish includes additional words of ultimate Latin derivation, but still very few, for example, arn orn, to pray, cf. Old French, or, the Jewish community in the Rhineland would have encountered the many dialects from which Standard German would emerge a few centuries later. In time, Jewish communities would have been speaking their own versions of these German dialects, mixed with linguistic elements that they themselves brought into the region. Although not reflected in the spoken language, a main point of difference was the use of the Hebrew alphabet for the recording of the Germanic vernacular, which may have been adopted either because of the community's familiarity with the alphabet or to prevent the non-Jewish population from understanding the correspondence. In addition, there was probably widespread illiteracy in the non-Hebrew script, with the level of illiteracy in the non-Jewish communities being even higher. Another point of difference was the use of Hebrew and Aramaic words. These words and terms were used because of their familiarity, but more so because in most cases there were no equivalent terms in the vernacular which could express the Jewish concepts or describe the objects of cultural significance. Written evidence It is not known when Yiddish orthography first developed. The oldest surviving literary document using it is a blessing in the Worms Machzor, a Hebrew prayer book from 1272. There is a scalable image online at the indicated reference. 
The Worms Mock Zor is discussed in Frakes, 2004, and Baumgarten, ed. Frakes, 2005 See the bibliography at the foot of this article. This brief rhyme is decoratively embedded in an otherwise purely Hebrew text. Nonetheless, it indicates that the Yiddish of that day was a more or less regular Middle High German written in the Hebrew alphabet into which Hebrew words Mahazwar, Makazar, prayer book for the High Holy Days, and Bayat Hakinset, synagogue, read in Yiddish as Beis Hakneses, had been included. The Nikit appears as though it might have been added by a second scribe, in which case it may need to be dated separately and may not be indicative of the pronunciation of the rhyme at the time of its initial annotation. Over the course of the 14th and 15th centuries, songs and poems in Yiddish, and macaronic pieces in Hebrew and German, began to appear. These were collected in the late 15th century by Menachem ben Naphtali Oldendorf. During the same period, a tradition seems to have emerged of the Jewish communities adapting its own versions of German secular literature. The earliest Yiddish epic poem of this sort is the Dukus Horant, which survives in the famous Cambridge Codex TS.10, K.22. This 14th-century manuscript was discovered in the Cairo Geniza in 1896, and also contains a collection of narrative poems on themes from the Hebrew Bible and the Haggadah. Printing the advent of the printing press in the 16th century enabled the large-scale production of works, at a cheaper cost, some of which have survived. One particularly popular work was Elia Levita's Bovo Buck, Baba B.W., composed around 1507–08 and printed several times, beginning in 1541 ISNY, under the title, Bovo D. Antona. Levita, the earliest named Yiddish author, may also have written Perry's own Buin Paris un Vienne, Paris and Vienna. Another Yiddish retelling of a chivalric romance, Widwit Vidbolt, often referred to as Widowilt, by Germanizing scholars, presumably also dates from the 15th century, although the manuscripts are from the 16th. It is also known as Kinnig Artis Hoff, an adaptation of the Middle High German romance Wigalwa by Wernt von Gravenberg. Another significant writer is Abraham ben Shemuel Picarte, who published a paraphrase on the Book of Job in 1557. Women in the Ashkenazi community were traditionally not literate in Hebrew, but did read and write Yiddish. A body of literature therefore developed for which women were a primary audience. This included secular works, such as the Bovo Buck, and religious writing specifically for women, such as the Znh Rhein Seno Areno and the Thou T. Kinds. One of the best-known early woman authors was Gluckel of Hamelm, whose memoirs are still in print. The segmentation of the Yiddish readership, between women who read Mamlon Mame Lashen but not Lounch Lashen Koidesh, and men who read both, was significant enough that distinctive typefaces were used for each. The name commonly given to the semicursive form used exclusively for Yiddish was Wauyabertjots Vabertach equals women's tach. Shown in the heading and fourth column in the adjacent illustration, with square Hebrew letters shown in the third column being reserved for text in that language and Aramaic. This distinction was retained in general typographic practice through to the early 19th century, with Yiddish books being set in Vabertach, also termed Miziat Meshate or Masked Mashket. The construction is uncertain. An additional distinctive semicursive typeface was, and still is, used for rabbinical commentary on religious texts when Hebrew and Yiddish appear on the same page. This is commonly termed Rashi script, from the name of the most renowned early author, whose commentary is usually printed using this script. Rashi is also the typeface normally used when the Sephardic counterpart to Yiddish, Judeo Spanish or Ladino, is printed in Hebrew script. Secularization the Western Yiddish dialect, sometimes pejoratively labeled Mauschel Dutch, i.e., Moses German, declined in the 18th century, as the Age of Enlightenment and the Haskalah led to a view of Yiddish as a corrupt dialect. A maskal from the same root word as Haskalah would write about and promote acclimatization to the outside world. Jewish children began attending secular schools where the primary language spoken and taught was German, not Yiddish. Owing to both assimilation to German and the revival of Hebrew, Western Yiddish survived only as a language of intimate family circles or of closely knit trade groups. Lipson 1972. 
In Eastern Europe, the response to these forces took the opposite direction, with Yiddish becoming the cohesive force in a secular culture, see the Yiddishist movement. Notable Yiddish writers of the late 19th and early 20th centuries are Sholem Yankev Abramovich, writing as Mendel Mockers Forum, Sholem Rabinovich, widely known as Sholem Alaikum, whose stories about T by Dr. Mielke, Tevi der Milkhiker, Tevi the Dairyman, inspired the Broadway musical and film Fiddler on the Roof, and Isaac Lieb Peretz. 20th century in the early 20th century, especially after the socialist October Revolution in Russia, Yiddish was emerging as a major Eastern European language. Its rich literature was more widely published than ever, Yiddish theater and Yiddish cinema were booming, and it for a time achieved status as one of the official languages of the Ukrainian people. S. Republic, the Byelorussian Soviet Socialist Republic and the short-lived Galician Soviet Socialist Republic, and the Jewish Autonomous Oblast. Educational autonomy for Jews in several countries, notably Poland, after World War I led to an increase in formal Yiddish language education, more uniform orthography, and to the 1925 founding of the Yiddish Scientific Institute, YIVO. In Vilnius, there was debate over which language should take primacy, Hebrew or Yiddish. Yiddish changed significantly during the 20th century. Michael Wex writes, as increasing numbers of Yiddish speakers moved from the Slavic-speaking East to Western Europe and the Americas in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, they were so quick to jettison Slavic vocabulary that the most prominent Yiddish writers of the time, the founders of modern Yiddish literature, who were still living in Slavic-speaking countries, revised the printed editions of their herbs to eliminate obsolete and Unnecessary slavisms, the vocabulary used in Israel absorbed many modern Hebrew words, and there was a similar but smaller increase in the English component of Yiddish in the United States and, to a lesser extent, the United Kingdom. This has resulted in some difficulty in communication between Yiddish speakers from Israel and those from other countries. Phonology Yiddish phonology is similar to that of Standard German. However, it does not have final obstruent devoicing and fortis voiceless, stop consonants are unaspirated, and the chi phoneme is invariably uvular, unlike the German phoneme x, which is palatal, velar, or uvular. Yiddish has a smaller inventory of vowels than standard German and no vowel length distinction. Numbers of speakers on the eve of World War II, there were 11 to 13 million Yiddish speakers. The Holocaust, however, led to a dramatic, sudden decline in the use of Yiddish, as the extensive Jewish communities, both secular and religious, that used Yiddish in their day-to-day -day life, were largely destroyed. Around 5 million of those killed, 85% of the Jews who died in the Holocaust, were speakers of Yiddish. Although millions of Yiddish speakers survived the war, including nearly all Yiddish speakers in the Americas, further assimilation in countries such as the United States and the Soviet Union, along with the strictly monolingual stance of the Zionist movement, led to a decline in the use of Eastern Yiddish. However, the number of speakers within the widely dispersed Haredi, mainly Hasidic communities is now increasing. Although used in various countries, Yiddish has attained official recognition as a minority language only in Moldova, Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Netherlands, and Sweden. Reports of the number of current Yiddish speakers vary significantly. Ethnologue estimates, based on publications through 1991, that there were at that time 1.5 million speakers of Eastern Yiddish, of which 40% lived in Ukraine, 15% in Israel, and 10% in the United States. The Modern Language Association agrees with fewer than 200,000 in the United States. Western Yiddish is reported by Ethnologue to have had an ethnic population of 50,000 in 2000, and an undated speaking population of 5,000, mostly in Germany. A 1996 report by the Council of Europe estimates a worldwide Yiddish speaking population of about 2 million. Further demographic information about the recent status of what is treated as an Eastern-Western dialect continuum is provided in the YIVO Language and Cultural Atlas of Ashkenazic Jewry, Language and Cultural Atlas of Ashkenazic Jewry. Status as a language 
There has been frequent debate about the extent of the linguistic independence of Yiddish from the languages that it absorbed. There has been periodic assertion that Yiddish is a dialect of German, or even just broken German, more of a linguistic mishmash than a true language. Even when recognized as an autonomous language, it has sometimes been referred to as Judeo-German, along the lines of other Jewish languages like Judeo-Persian, Judeo-Spanish or Zarphatic. A widely cited summary of attitudes in the 1930s was published by Max Weinreich, quoting a remark by an auditor of one of his lectures, a sprach is a dialect might an army own plata shaprak is a dialect mit an army un flot. A language is a dialect with an army and navy. Israel and Zionism The national language of Israel is Hebrew. The debate in Zionist circles over the use of Yiddish in Israel and in the diaspora in preference to Hebrew also reflected the tensions between religious and secular Jewish lifestyles. Many secular Zionists wanted Hebrew as the sole language of Jews, to contribute to a national cohesive identity. Traditionally religious Jews, on the other hand, preferred use of Yiddish, viewing Hebrew as a respected holy language reserved for prayer and religious study. In the early 20th century, Zionist activists in Palestine tried to eradicate the use of Yiddish among Jews in preference to Hebrew, and make its use socially unacceptable. This conflict also reflected the opposing views among secular Jews worldwide, one side seeing Hebrew and Zionism and the other Yiddish and internationalism as the means of defining Jewish nationalism. In the 1920s and 1930s, Gedot Majani Hes Gdud Majani Hasafa, the language defendants regiment whose motto was, Bri Dibinir Bright Ivri, Dabur Ivrit, that is, Hebrew, i.e., Jew, speak Hebrew, used to tear down signs written in foreign languages and disturb Yiddish theater gatherings. However, according to linguist Galad Zuckerman, the members of this group in particular, and the Hebrew revival in general, did not succeed in uprooting Yiddish patterns, as well as the patterns of other European languages Jewish immigrants spoke within what he calls Israeli, i.e. modern Hebrew. Zuckerman believes that Israeli does include numerous Hebrew elements resulting from a conscious revival but also numerous pervasive linguistic features deriving from a subconscious survival of the revivalists' mother tongues, e.g. Yiddish. After the founding of the State of Israel, a massive wave of Jewish immigrants from Arab countries arrived. In short order, these Mizrahi Jews and their descendants would account for nearly half the Jewish population. While all were at least familiar with Hebrew as a liturgical language, essentially none had any contact with or affinity for Yiddish. Some, of Sephardic origin, spoke Judeo-Spanish, others various Judeo-Arabic languages. Thus, Hebrew emerged as the dominant linguistic common denominator between the different population groups. In religious circles, it is the Ashkenazi Haredi Jews, particularly the Hasidic Jews and the Lithuanian Yeshiva world see Lithuanian Jews, who continue to teach, speak and use Yiddish, making it a language used regularly by hundreds of thousands of Haredi Jews today. The largest of these centers are in B'nai Brak and Jerusalem. There is a growing revival of interest in Yiddish culture among secular Israelis, with the flourishing of new proactive cultural organizations like Young Yiddish, as well as Yiddish theater, usually with simultaneous translation to Hebrew and Russian, and young people are taking university courses in Yiddish, some achieving considerable fluency. Former Soviet Union in the Soviet Union during the 1920s, Yiddish was promoted as the language of the Jewish proletariat. It was one of the official languages of the Byelorussian Soviet Socialist Republic. Until 1938, the emblem of the Byelorussian Soviet Socialist Republic included the motto Workers of the World, Unite, in Yiddish. Yiddish was also official language in several agricultural districts of the Galician Soviet Socialist Republic. A public educational system entirely based on the Yiddish language was established and comprised kindergartens, schools, and higher educational institutions, technical schools, rabfox and other university departments. At the same time, Hebrew was considered a bourgeois language and its use was generally discouraged. 
The vast majority of the Yiddish language cultural institutions were closed in the late 1930s, along with cultural institutions of other ethnic minorities lacking administrative entities of their own. The last Yiddish language schools, theaters and publications were closed by the end of the 1940s. It continued to be spoken widely for decades, nonetheless, in areas with compact Jewish populations, primarily in Moldova, Ukraine, and to a lesser extent Belarus. In the former Soviet states, recently active Yiddish authors include Yosef Berg, Chernitsi 1912 to 2009, and Alexander Baderman, B, 1949, Odessa. Publication of an earlier Yiddish periodical, Dr. Prayant der Freint, lit. The Friend was resumed in 2004 with Dr. Nyer Prayan, Der Nyer Freint, lit. The New Friend, St. Petersburg. Russia According to the 2010 census, 1,683 people spoke Yiddish in Russia, approximately 1% of all the Jews of the Russian Federation. According to Mikhail Shvedkoy, former Minister of Culture of Russia and himself of Jewish origin, Yiddish culture in Russia is gone, and its revival is unlikely. From my point of view, Yiddish culture today isn. T just fading away, but disappearing. It is stored as memories, as fragments of phrases, as books that have long gone unread. Yiddish culture is dying and this should be treated with utmost calm. There is no need to pity that which cannot be resurrected. It has receded into the world of the enchanting past, where it should remain. Any artificial culture, a culture without replenishment, is meaningless. Everything that happens with Yiddish culture is transformed into a kind of cabaret epistolary genre, nice, cute to the ear and the eye, but having nothing to do with high art, because there is no natural, national soil. In Russia, it is the memory of the departed, sometimes sweet memories. But it's the memories of what will never be again. Perhaps that's why these memories are always so sharp. Jewish Autonomous Oblast the Jewish Autonomous Oblast was formed in 1934 in the Russian Far East, with its capital city in Borovidzon and Yiddish as its official language. The intention was for the Soviet Jewish population to settle there. Jewish cultural life was revived in Borovidzon much earlier than elsewhere in the Soviet Union. Yiddish theaters began opening in the 1970s. The newspaper Dr. Byrobides Sand Stren, Der Borovidzhainer Stern, lit. The Borovidzon Star includes a Yiddish section. Although the official status of the language was not retained by the Russian Federation, its cultural significance is still recognized and bolstered. The first Borobidzon International Summer Program for Yiddish Language and Culture was launched in 2007. As of 2010, according to data provided by the Russian Census Bureau, there were 97 speakers of Yiddish in the Zhao. Ukraine Yiddish was an official language of the Ukrainian People's Republic 1917 to 1921. Council of Europe Several countries that ratified the 1992 European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages have included Yiddish in the list of their recognized minority languages, the Netherlands 1996, Sweden 2000, Romania 2008, Poland 2009, Bosnia and Herzegovina 2010. In 2005, Ukraine did not mention Yiddish as such, but the languages of the Jewish ethnic minority. Sweden. In June 1999, the Swedish parliament enacted legislation giving Yiddish legal status as one of the country's official minority languages, entering into effect in April 2000. The rights thereby conferred are not detailed, but additional legislation was enacted in June 2006 establishing a new governmental agency, the Swedish National Language Council, the mandate of which instructs it to collect, preserve, scientifically research, and spread material about the national minority languages. Naming them all explicitly, including Yiddish. When announcing this action, the government made an additional statement about simultaneously commencing completely new initiatives for Yiddish and the other minority languages. 
The Swedish government publishes documents in Yiddish, of which the most recent details the National Action Plan for Human Rights. An earlier one provides general information about national minority language policies. On 6 September 2007, it became possible to register Internet domains with Yiddish names in the national top level domain, SE. The first Jews were permitted to reside in Sweden during the late 18th century. The Jewish population in Sweden is estimated at around 20,000. Of these, according to various reports and surveys, between 2,000 and 6,000 claim to have at least some knowledge of Yiddish. In 2009, the number of native speakers among these was estimated by linguist Michael Parkle to be 750-1500. It is believed that virtually all native speakers of Yiddish in Sweden today are adults, and most of them elderly. United States In the United States, at first most Jews were of Sephardic origin, and hence did not speak Yiddish. It was not until the mid to late 19th century, as first German, then Eastern European, Jews arrived in the nation, that Yiddish became dominant within the immigrant community. This helped to bond Jews from many countries. Parauer's Vorwärts, The Forward, was one of seven Yiddish daily newspapers in New York City, and other Yiddish newspapers served as a forum for Jews of all European backgrounds. In 1915, the circulation of the daily Yiddish newspapers was half a million in New York City alone, and 600,000 nationally. In addition, thousands more subscribed to the numerous weekly papers and the many magazines. The typical circulation in the 21st century is a few thousand. The foreword still appears weekly and is also available in an online edition. It remains in wide distribution, together with Dr. Algemeyn Zarnal, Der Algemeiner Zernal, Algemeiner Journal, Algemeiner equals General, a Chabad newspaper which is also published weekly and appears online. The widest circulation Yiddish newspapers are probably the weekly issues Der Yid, Dr. The Jew, Der Blatt, Dr. Blatt Blatt, Paper, and Die Zeitung, Die, The Newspaper. Several additional newspapers and magazines are in regular production, such as the weekly Edisar Tribune Yiddish Tribune and the monthly publications Dr. Strand, Der Stern, The Star, and Dr. Bleich, Der Blick, The View. The romanized titles cited in this paragraph are in the form given on the masthead of each publication and may be at some variance both with the literal Yiddish title and the transliteration rules otherwise applied in this article. Thriving Yiddish theater, especially in the New York City Yiddish Theater District, kept the language vital. Interest in klezmer music provided another bonding mechanism. Most of the Jewish immigrants to the New York metropolitan area during the years of Ellis Island considered Yiddish their native language, however, native Yiddish speakers tended not to pass the language on to their children, who assimilated and spoke English. For example, Isaac Asimov states in his autobiography In Memory Yet Green that Yiddish was his first and sole spoken language, and remained so for about two years after he emigrated to the United States as a small child. By contrast, Asimov's younger siblings, born in the United States, never developed any degree of fluency in Yiddish. Many Yiddishisms, like Italianisms and Spanishisms, entered New York City English, often used by Jews and non-Jews alike, unaware of the linguistic origin of the phrases. Yiddish words used in English were documented extensively by Leo Rossin in The Joys of Yiddish, see also the list of English words of Yiddish origin. In 1975, the film Hester Street, much of which is in Yiddish, was released. It was later chosen to be on the Library of Congress National Film Registry for being considered a culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Film. In 1976, the Canadian born American author Saul Bellow received the Nobel Prize in Literature. He was fluent in Yiddish, and translated several Yiddish poems and stories into English, including Isaac Vashevis Singer's Gimple the Fool. In 1978, Isaac Vashevis Singer, a writer in the Yiddish language, who was born in Poland and lived in the United States, received the Nobel Prize in Literature. Legal scholars Eugene Volokh and Alex Kaczynski argue that Yiddish is supplanting Latin as the spice in American legal argo. Present U.S. speaker population 
In the 2000 United States Census, 178,945 people in the United States reported speaking Yiddish at home. Of these speakers, 113,515 lived in New York, 63.43% of American Yiddish speakers, 18,220 in Florida, 10.18%, 9,145 in New Jersey, 5.11%, and 8,950 in California, 5.00%. The remaining states with speaker populations larger than 1,000 are Pennsylvania 5,445, Ohio 1,925, Michigan 1,945, Massachusetts 2,380, Maryland 2,125, Illinois 3,510, Connecticut 1,710, and Arizona 1,055. The population is largely elderly, 72,885 of the speakers were older than 65, 66,815 were between 18 and 64, and only 39,245 were age 17 or lower. In the six years since the 2000 census, the 2006 American Community Survey reflected an estimated 15% decline of people speaking Yiddish at home in the U.S. to 152,515. In 2011, the number of persons in the United States above the age of five speaking Yiddish at home was 160,968. There are a few predominantly Hasidic communities in the United States in which Yiddish remains the majority language including concentrations in the Crown Heights, Borough Park, and Williamsburg neighborhoods of Brooklyn. In Kiria's Joel in Orange County, New York, in the 2000 census, nearly 90% of residents of Kiria's Joel reported speaking Yiddish at home. United Kingdom There are well over 30,000 Yiddish speakers in the United Kingdom, and several thousand children now have Yiddish as a first language. The largest group of Yiddish speakers in Britain reside in the Stamford Hill district of North London, but there are sizable communities in northwest London, Leeds, Manchester and Gateshead. The Yiddish readership in the UK is mainly reliant upon imported material from the United States and Israel for newspapers, magazines and other periodicals. However, the London-based weekly Jewish Tribune has a small section in Yiddish called Edie's Tribune Yiddish Tribune. From the 1910s to the 1950s, London had a daily Yiddish newspaper called Die Zayat, DTSAYT, Yiddish pronunciation, DSAT, in English, The Time, founded, and edited from offices in Whitechapel Road, by Romanian-born Morris Maya, who was succeeded on his death in 1943 by his son Harry. There were also from time to time Yiddish newspapers in Manchester, Liverpool, Glasgow and Leeds. Canada Montreal had, and to some extent still has, one of the most thriving Yiddish communities in North America. Yiddish was Montreal's third language, after French and English, for the entire first half of the 20th century. Der Kennedor Adler. The Canadian Eagle. Founded by Hirsch Wolofsky, Montreal's daily Yiddish newspaper, appeared from 1907 to 1988. The Monument National was the center of Yiddish theater from 1896 until the construction of the SETI Brofman Center for the Arts, now the Siegel Center for Performing Arts, inaugurated on September 24, 1967, where the established resident theater, the Dora Wasserman Yiddish Theater, remains the only permanent Yiddish theater in North America. The theater group also tours Canada, U.S., Israel, and Europe. Even though Yiddish has receded, it is the immediate ancestral language of Montrealers like Mordecai Richler, Leonard Cohen as well as former interim city mayor Michael Applebaum. Besides Yiddish-speaking activists, it remains today the native everyday language of 15,000 Montreal Hasidim. Religious communities the major exception to the decline of spoken Yiddish can be found in Haredi communities all over the world. In some of the more closely knit such communities, Yiddish is spoken as a home and schooling language, especially in Hasidic, Litvish, or Yeshivish communities, such as Brooklyn's Borough Park, Williamsburg, and Crown Heights, and in the communities of Monzi, Kiryas Joel, and New Square in New York, over 88% of the population of Kiryas Joel is reported to speak Yiddish at home. Also in New Jersey, Yiddish is widely spoken mostly in Lakewood Township, but also in smaller towns with yeshivas, such as Passaic, Teaneck, and elsewhere. 
Yiddish is also widely spoken in the Jewish community in Antwerp, and in Haredi communities such as the ones in London, Manchester, and Montreal. Yiddish is also spoken in many Haredi communities throughout Israel. Among most Ashkenazi Herdim, Hebrew is generally reserved for prayer, while Yiddish is used for religious studies, as well as a home and business language. In Israel, however, Herdim commonly speak Hebrew, with the notable exception of many Hasidic communities. However, many Herdim who use modern Hebrew also understand Yiddish. There are some who send their children to schools in which the primary language of instruction is Yiddish. Members of anti-Zionist Haredi groups such as the Satmar Hasidim, who view the commonplace use of Hebrew as a form of Zionism, use Yiddish almost exclusively. Hundreds of thousands of young children around the globe have been, and are still, taught to translate the texts of the Torah into Yiddish. This process is called Tayatsin Tech. Translating. Most Ashkenazi yeshivas' highest level lectures in Talmud and Halakha are delivered in Yiddish by the Rosh yeshivas as well as ethical talks of the Musar movement. Hasidic rebbes generally use only Yiddish to converse with their followers and to deliver their various Torah talks, classes, and lectures. The linguistic style and vocabulary of Yiddish have influenced the manner in which many Orthodox Jews who attend yeshivas speak English. This usage is distinctive enough that it has been dubbed yeshivish. While Hebrew remains the exclusive language of Jewish prayer, the Hasidim have mixed some Yiddish into their Hebrew, and are also responsible for a significant secondary religious literature written in Yiddish. For example, the tales about the Baal Shem Tov were written largely in Yiddish. The Torah talks of the late Chabad leaders are published in their original form, Yiddish. In addition, some prayers, such as God of Abraham, were composed and are recited in Yiddish. Modern Yiddish education There has been a resurgence in Yiddish learning in recent times among many from around the world with Jewish ancestry. The language which had lost many of its native speakers during World War II has been making somewhat of a comeback. In Poland, which traditionally had Yiddish-speaking communities, a museum has begun to revive Yiddish education and culture. Located in Krakow, the Galicia Jewish Museum offers classes in Yiddish language instruction and workshops on Yiddish songs. The museum has taken steps to revive the culture through concerts and events held on site. There are various universities worldwide which now offer Yiddish programs based on the Yivo Yiddish standard. Many of these programs are held during the summer and are attended by Yiddish enthusiasts from around the world. One such school located within Vilnius University, Vilnius Yiddish Institute, was the first Yiddish center of higher learning to be established in post-Holocaust Eastern Europe. Vilnius Yiddish Institute is an integral part of the four-century-old Vilnius University. Published Yiddish scholar and researcher Dovid Katz is among the faculty. Despite this growing popularity among many American Jews, finding opportunities for practical use of Yiddish is becoming increasingly difficult, and thus many students have trouble learning to speak the language. One solution has been the establishment of a farm in Goshen, New York for Yiddishists. Internet Google Translate includes Yiddish as one of its languages, as does Wikipedia. Hebrew alphabet keyboards are available and right-to-left writing recognized. Google Search accepts queries in Yiddish. Over 10,000 Yiddish texts, estimated as over half of all the published works in Yiddish, are now online based on the work of the Yiddish Book Center, Volunteers, and the Internet Archive. Many websites on the Internet are in Yiddish. In January 2013, The Forward announced the launch of the new daily version of their newspaper's website, which has been active since 1999 as an online weekly, supplied with radio and video programs, a literary section for fiction writers and a special blog written in local contemporary Hasidic dialects. Computer scientist Raphael Finkel maintains a hub of Yiddish language resources, including a searchable dictionary and spell checker. In late 2016, Motorola, Inc. released its smartphones with keyboard access for the Yiddish language in its foreign language option. Language examples Here is a short example of the Yiddish language with standard German as a comparison. Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights English All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. 
They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Yiddish Eder Mansuar Gaborn Praya On Glyak in Cave Don Eder Warg Basanchan Might Parstand On Gwawasan Eder Zal Zik Pirn Might Azwawadan in a Gamit Pon Braust Yiddish Phonetic Version Yeder Mensch Vert Geborn Frey Un Glake in Coved Un Recht Yeder Vert Bashankan Mit Farstand Un Gebison Yeder Zal Zik Fern Mit Asvatan in a Gemit Fun Bruderschaft German Alla mention sind frei und gleichen word und rechten geboren. Sei sind mit vernumt und guessen begabt und sollen einander im Geist der Bruderlichkeit begegnen. See also List of English words of Yiddish origin, List of Yiddish language poets, List of Yiddish newspapers and periodicals. The Yiddish King Lear Yiddish Book Center Yiddish Dialects As spoken in different regions of Europe Yiddish Grammar The structural detail of the language Yiddish Literature Yiddish Orthography The written representation of the language Yiddishist Movement Yiddish words used in English Definitions of Yiddish words used in a primarily English context Yinglish References Bibliography Further reading Yivo Bleeder, Pub. Yivo Institute for Jewish Research, NYC, Initial Series from 1931, New Series since 1991. AFN Schwell, Pub. League for Yiddish, NYC, since 1940, Wipen Swell Sample Article Wins, Pers R. Peritz Levens Fragen, by monthly for social issues, current affairs, and culture, Tel Aviv, since 1951, Paus Print Current Issue, Yerushalayim or Almanac, Periodical Collection of Yiddish Literature and Culture, Jerusalem, since 1973, Erwilamar Lmank New Volume, Contents and Downloads Der Yiddischer Tam Tam, Pub. Maison de la Culture Yiddish, Paris, since 1994, also available in electronic format. Yiddish Heftn, Pub. Le Cercle Bernard Lazare, Paris, since 1996, Yiddish Hden Sample Cover, Subscription Info. Gilgalim, Ne Schaffungen, New Literary Magazine, Paris, since 2008. Jilim Nye. External links Yiddish Book Center, Yivo Institute for Jewish Research, Yiddish Dictionaries.